And good morning. Welcome to another edition of the Real Estate Radio Hour. Always welcome your real estate questions at 651-989-9226 or text us at 81807. I was just going to say on that hot property, yeah. Andy, that's one of Andy's listings. And uh, you were just saying that uh, people better hurry up and come check that out because you got... Yeah, that's uh, what you call a hot area. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, I mean, and we get... Uh, I mean, it's. I think I had... 20 showings my first day that was listed here on Friday. So wow. looks like it'll be a multiple offer, but it's, you know, it's a... Linden, that area Linden Hills, right? Yeah, yeah right yeah, on Linden. 44th and Upton. I mean, yeah. you walk to the awesome restaurants and the lakes two blocks yeah. the other direction and exactly. Harriet and yeah. neat stuff. So... All right. So what, hurry what, up and get over there. Very good. Right. <laughs> hey, all right. Going kind of what I would ended up on the last segment there, um, you know, and talking about, you know, if I'm representing my seller and I don't want to uh, put his exposure way out to the pilgrim age. I mean, it's not that much, but I mean, saying, I mean, it's when it was first uh, titled, I guess, right. is that what we're, you're protecting? Yeah. Because if, back to 1850s. Yeah. yeah I mean, if there's, uh, you know, the great grandparents of the parents of the parents had a divorce and it wasn't, um, you know, satisfied correctly. I mean, that eventually maybe could come back and create a title problem. Right. Yeah. There's, there are certain things that have like an end time and you don't have to worry about it anymore. But there are things that can last for years and years and years and years that you might have to deal with. Right. So now I'm saying that there's a thing called title insurance. Okay. That obviously. I've never heard of that. Yeah. <laughs> that insures the title, uh, you know, you that, that, that it's good. But when, you, when you're buying as a buyer, you're getting title insurance to be able to protect the mortgage part of it, not your equity. Correct. Right. Yep. Okay. And so then there's an owner's title policy, which protects you. What does that owner's title insurance do? I mean, for a buyer, what does that protect them? Well, like you said, there's two basic kinds. There's the lenders and the owners. The lenders really is just for the lender, and that's it. So if you think, well, I don't need to get title insurance because – you know, the lender got it. That's not truly the case because it doesn't protect you. But for an owner, it protects, you know, in case there are any mistakes that were made at the closing, in case there are any bad transfers in the past, you know, in case there are any, any unseen things that were missed, you know, during the examination process. Of maybe there's an open mortgage out there that got missed or, or any of those sorts of issues that you might have to deal with or maybe your neighbor has an interest in your property, like an easement that wasn't found or any of those things. That's what, you know, those things would be protected by title right. insurance. Okay. So, and when we're talking title insurance, that just doesn't protect you for what you put down as a down payment. I mean, if I was to sell in, say, 10 years from now, you know, that protects my equity. Um, yeah, it, it, essentially what it, it, it protects, it, 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 correct. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's talk about, I know we've had a lot of callers that have uh, asked us about, you know, they, they have a property they want to transfer to their children or their estate um, or, you know, multiple siblings. Can you talk just a little bit about that and make us comfortable with that and what the, maybe the proper process is versus the perceived process. Right. Yeah, and again, this is a situation where you're looking at what is your what is what is your estate plan? How do you want to handle things? You know, and depending on your situation, it can be totally different. But a couple basic ways that, you know, that we see a lot of are, you know, where an individual who owns a piece of property might reserve a life estate in their property. Essentially what that means is they would deed the property to whomever, probably probably children, and they would retain a life estate. Essentially that gives them the right to live in that property until they die and then the children would be able to take 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 the property and do what, what they want with. The other option is is something that's relatively new in the past, you know, three, four, five years, which is called a transfer on death deed or a TOD. And that what that allows you to do is allows you to indicate which people you would like to have your property when you die, but you're not actually transferring it to them right now. You're actually indicating it, and then when and then you retain the interest in that property, so you're able to do what you want with that property. If you want want to turn on a sell it a week later after executing a Todd deed, you could do that. And hmm. and the Todd just ends ends up withering on the vine or just kind so of So you still retain control is ultimately the Right. Okay. All right. I'll tell you what, let's go to the line uh, line one. Tom in South St. Paul has a question. Go ahead, Tom. Thank you. Uh, question uh, I'd like to ask a question and uh, hang up and listen, but okay. can you explain the difference between abstract property and Torrance title property? And which would be better as far as ownership is concerned? Uh, thanks, Tom. That's that's a great question. And we get that all the time. Okay. Did you answer that, Liam? Yeah. And essentially what it is is there's, Minnesota is one of the few states that has two different recording systems. One is the abstract recording system. One is Torrance recording system. Um, and so really, as far as a piece of property, it's no different. The only the only difference, essentially, Torrance property is was created by a judicial um, process of some sort. So you, it's called registered property. And things are a little, can be a little more technical, a little more involved with Torrance property as far as eliminating interest from, from that property. But really there isn't, there isn't a difference. I wouldn't, 
I wouldn't say like you want to buy one piece of property over the other when you're looking at like if you're trying to compare two houses and decide do I want to buy this one or this one because one's Torrance and one's abstract. But most municipalities now uh, prefer the the Torrance system because of its simplicity and it's there's the, like for example when you buy a farm and you get the big book the abstract we all keep in our freezer right and then you go to close and you divide it into thirty lots everybody gets a piece of paper now which now they've converted to a Torrance style system. Can you explain a little bit about how like when you're saying it's a judicial system or done through the law how how does that work? Um, well, yeah, well, essentially, like you say, everything started off as abstract. And at some point, we in- instituted the Torrance system. And so if you want to create a Torrance piece of property, you have to go to court. And essentially, they have examiners down at the counties that will essentially do the same thing I would do sitting at my desk. And they'll go through and examine the property and figure out all those various things that affect it. And then they'll create this one-page certificate, like you said, that lists all of those things. And so you can just take one page, look at it, and be able to, you know, in, in two minutes to see what affects your property and how, you know, what issues you might have. All right. At this point, halfway point here, we'll take a break and uh, remind our listeners, if you do have a question, we'll take them either phone-wise or text-wise, 651-989-9226, or you can send a text to us at 81807. We'll be back with more of the Real Estate Radio Hour here on 830 WCC. 